If you ask where falafel or ta'amiya comes from, you'll never get the same answer twice. In this mini-series, we're going to cook two authentic, delicious and vegan street food from Cairo all the way to Sicily. So let's not waste time and let's get cooking. The first step of making falafel is always soaking fava beans in water overnight a day before. Then discard the soaking water and drain them completely. You can mash them in a strong food processor or even in a clean meat grinder. This step can be anywhere from super easy to super hard depending on the equipment you're using. So start by adding some of each ingredient in the food processor so it would be easier to mash as grinding the fava on its own might be very hard as it doesn't contain any liquids. I like to mash part of the mixture very fine and leave some coarser so it gives a nice balanced not so mushy texture. You will need to scrape the sides from time to time to make sure the mixture is all evenly ground. Do you know that coriander was cultivated by the ancient Egyptians? The Ebers papyrus, an Egyptian medical text dated to around 1550 BC, described coriander's medicinal and culinary uses. Coriander is used in cuisines throughout the world and is also known as Chinese parsley. As heat diminishes their flavor, coriander leaves are often used raw or added to the dish immediately before serving. It's always better to put the spices on the falafel mix and fry them straight away, not to lose the air incorporated in the mixture during the grinding process. After grinding all the ingredients, put them together in a bowl and cover it with cling film. I'm going to make shami bread now, and that's the reason I had to put my falafel mixture in the fridge so as not to spoil from the heat. Add salt to the flour and mix. Then add the sugar and yeast to the tepid water and stir it. Leave it to activate for 5 minutes and after it foams, add it to the flour and start mixing. And in some parts of the world to this day, traditionally, milling is the process by which cereal grains are ground into flour. This would have been accomplished by grinding the grain between two stones, a lower stationary stone called the quern stone and an upper mobile stone called the hand stone. Add the water a bit at a time and keep stirring. As the agricultural production of wheat grew and population became larger, there would have been the need for more efficient methods of flour production. Powered mills would have provided this step forward and these were common by Roman times. Knead the dough for 10 minutes until soft and elastic, adding a little flour only if necessary. See how the dough starts to become lighter in color and more elastic to the touch? Sugar affects the rate of fermentation reactions. A little sugar, up to 3%, speeds up fermentation. The yeast processes the added sugar first, saving the time it would take to break down starch into sugar. Put the dough into an oil bowl and cover it with cling film and leave it to rise in a warm spot for one hour to one hour and a half or until doubles in size. This causes the dough to expand or rise as gas forms pockets or bubbles. When the dough is baked, the yeast dies and the air pockets set, giving the baked product a soft and spongy texture. Now, knock down the dough on your lightly floured countertop and work it for another 10 minutes. Cut the dough roughly into equal pieces, then take each piece and shape it into a little bowl. Use a rolling pin to flatten each bowl. Heat up your oven with the baking tray inside, on the maximum heat it can reach, which is normally about 250 degrees Celsius. The tray you're using in baking has to be super hot, or the bread wouldn't puff up. I cut the flattened dough with a little cookie cutter just to give you some finger food ideas, but I personally prefer to give them a more rustic shape. Put your flattened dough on the hot tray and straight to the top shelf as it's the hottest part of the oven. Hot air always goes up. Bake the dough for 4 minutes on each side. Once baked, Take it off onto a tray allowing the steam to escape. You will notice that not only your bread will evenly puff up as heat distribution plays a big role in this process. If you want all your bread to be perfectly puffed, you will have to put two or three pieces at a time depending on the size of your oven. 
The ovens which bakers use to cook this kind of bread or any flat bread are extremely hot, way hotter than the average household ovens. They can go up to 500 degrees. Wow! See how when you bake few pieces at a time, you get a better rising? Use a pestle and mortar to crush the spices to garnish the falafel with. Now, it's time to season the falafel mix. Put salt, baking powder, baking soda, coriander and cumin powder and mix it thoroughly. Meanwhile, heat up the frying oil. You need to be fast at this point. You don't want to lose the baking soda effect on your falafel. This chemical reaction of baking soda will give your fried falafel its unique crunchy and airy texture. Shape your falafel mix into little bowls using your hands. Or buy this equipment, it's cheap and really handy. Dip the bowls into raw sesame seeds or some of the crushed spices. Then deep fry them in a very hot oil, then reduce the heat to medium so as not to burn the falafel before getting nicely cooked in the center. When they reach the lovely golden brown color, take them off the oil in a wire rack so they can keep their crunch and not to become soft at the bottom. Just to give you an idea of how fussy we are as Egyptians about our falafel, we eat it hot and really hot straight from the frying pan. If it gets cold, it's already leftovers. It's never the same after 10 minutes, at least for us. By the way, falafel freezes very well. You can put the mix before seasoning it into a freezer bag, then defrost it before eating. Adding salt and the rest of the spices, fry it and enjoy. It will be darker though, as the coriander releases a dark green color after being thawed. So don't worry about that, the taste wouldn't be affected at all. Now mix your tahini paste with cold water. Then add the sugarcane vinegar and stir vigorously. Be careful not to add so much liquid at a time or your tahini will split and spoil. You can always adjust the consistency to your liking, adding more or less water. Add salt, cumin powder, chili flakes, paprika and garlic powder, then give it a stir. Slice up one tomato and enjoy your hot crunchy falafel inside your freshly baked chamois bread. Hello guys, the heat is unbearable, so just kind of refresh a little bit before enjoying this paradise. And I got in the wind. I finally can say I have falafel and it's true they're really fluffy it's nothing I, I ever experienced before guys um, putting the bicarbonate so they're very soft and at the same time crunchy on the outside amazing it's, I really love it so it's really a great experience The origin of falafel is unknown or controversial. A common theory that the dish originated in Egypt. Drawings were found on tombs in ancient Egypt in Wadi al-Muluk. Falafel is made out of ground fava beans, chickpeas, or a mixture of both. The dish probably migrated to the Levant, where chickpeas replaced the fava beans. These deep-fried bowls are a staple of both Egyptian and Levantine cuisines. Whether eaten alone or served in pita bread or tahini, they are very common in restaurants and food stalls from Aden to Istanbul and from Baghdad to Benghazi. Falafel became a common form of street food and the most eaten breakfast in Egypt. 
as it acts like the base, which will keep you going throughout the day without being hungry at lunchtime. And another theory that it was eaten by Egyptian cults who revived vegan dishes from ancient Egypt as a replacement for meat during Lent. Another theory says that falafel is comparatively modern. Basically, falafel is enjoyed by 100 million Egyptians. So it's likely that this dish originated from these lands. So whatever the origin of falafel is, we all agree that it's an amazing, tasteful dish that not only Middle Easterns enjoy, but people from all around the world would die for. And by the way, there is a lovely video by Dave Byers about the Egyptian falafel. Go check it out. Should we say goodbye? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Let's enjoy it. Leave us to enjoy it. So guys, give it a try. Yeah? Hope you enjoyed this one. Yeah, I really hope you like it. Episode. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe to our channel share. and please do support us on Patreon. We really appreciate your support. So Thank you very much. Salam. Salam. Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>